What we have here is an ambitious dud. The Cadillac CTS V Wagon. The CTS part's popular, the V part's popular. But the wagon thing, no, it doesn't really work. Let's find out the story behind this car as we drive this 2013 CTS V Wagon, last of its generation. Check the tech. trivia to start with. This is Cadillac's first and so far only station wagon that wasn't designed to carry dead people. Although the way it sells, they'd probably welcome a couple of corpses coming in the showroom. They persist with this model because Europeans love this style of highly sort of chamfered urban wagon form. Americans don't, but Cadillac has big ambitions on Europe, so it persists. Now inside our CTS, again, an outgoing generation, it's kind of like a flashback a few years in car tech. Once you get over this toaster slice pop-up 8-inch screen, which I still think is kind of cool, I like to have it down when I'm not using the map, you realize it's missing a lot of things. That navigation interface, while perfectly functional, it doesn't offer a lot of interesting stuff. There's no satellite view, certainly no Google Earth, no Google search, no search to nav. It's just an old school kind of map. It is touch based primarily. You can get on this thing and move things fairly easily. But let's get into our audio sources. You can do AM or FM, but not HD radio, not on this car. That dates it. Satellite radio is there. We have our iPod connector in here, and I mean an iPod connector, a 30 pin, which goes into one of these double harness things. But notice the console is so small, and a modern iPhone requires an adapter because that's 30 pin. You end up having really nowhere to put this thing once it's connected. Again, it's feeling a little dated. 10 gigabytes of hard drive space to rip CDs and such too. And under the auxiliary tab here is where I'm going to bring up my iPod, as you can see. There's the USB connection. You could also put a thumb drive in there. Now, the Bluetooth system is interesting. You do have Bluetooth calling on this guy, but you either don't or don't simultaneously have Bluetooth streaming. Depends on what part of the manual you read. I couldn't get it to pair as a media player at all, and the manual says you certainly can't use it as a media player and a phone at the same time. Now we have General Motors' rather curious Audio TiVo in here. That's not their name for it, that's mine, but it's pause and play of radio. I think it's a one hour buffer, and this pause play button is what activates it. So you got a radio station on, satellite or broadcast, you push this thing here, and see what it does, it starts to buffer up to a 60 minute max. Now notice what we're missing as we go through audio or navigation or our configuration screens or any of this. This is not Cadillac's Q system which we've seen, it's still fairly early in its deployment. We like it a lot. This is the old outgoing rig. You're not gonna see this on any other Cadillac product. So this is where we're coming from. Q is where we're going to. Now, a quick look at some of the other controls in this car. You got really two ways to influence this car's personality. You can pull it back in the drive on this automatic and then either go over here to the sport mode where you can also shift. For the suspension, you got one button here with two positions. You're either in touring mode or sport mode. And that's it. It's very clean and simple. Paddles up here on the wheel for when you are shifting. Again, this car is available with a six-speed manual. The automatic is a no-choice pick. The only unusual doohickeys on the main instrument panel are a boost gauge for the supercharger there, 0 to 15 PSI. And if you roll up here on one of these little information screens, you're going to find a G-force gauge for lateral acceleration. And we have the optional sunroof in this guy. Uh, it doesn't come standard even on a CTS-V, which is a little unusual, but I guess some folks are gonna wanna sort of lighten up their vehicle or keep it more pure. Yeah. But this one has got a nice big opening to it. The front half moves, the back half doesn't, but it really opens up this relatively small cabin a lot. All right, this is why you really buy a CTS with a V at the end of it. To get this big engine, 6.2 liter supercharged V8. That's how they used to do it, kids. That's a lot of displacement. It's also a lot of blower pressure coming off this Eaton supercharger. And that's gonna give you 556 horsepower, 551 foot-pounds of torque. Those are big numbers. Now this car is not exactly a lightweight, 4,400 pounds or so. It still gets to 60 in four seconds flat. Thank you, big motor. Here's the downside. You're gonna be stopping at every gas station. 12, 18 MPG. There's almost no car left that gets such ghastly gas mileage. In fact, this car has the dubious honor of being the worst MPG station wagon sold in America, period. Rear wheel drive only, and as I mentioned, 
your choice of transmissions. For no cost, you can get that automatic, but you'd be a fool. Get the six speed, because that kind of transmission and this kind of power are seldom seen in the wild, certainly at this price. One of the first things you're reminded of in this car is how great a supercharger is. No lag, no delay, no vagueness or spooliness. It just gets right down to it. We've had other 500 some odd horsepower cars in recently, and a lot of them get stuck in committee when you step on it. This is not one of them. Power is pretty much right now. What is getting in my way is this automatic, which is really a tragedy. If you're gonna buy one of these, get it with a stick. It's gonna so dramatically unfilter the power coming out of this engine. And there's gobs of it, by the way, even with its limited slip differential, magnetic ride control, active suspension, and just about all the modern technologies, it does suffer from being rear wheel drive in this case because there's just too much power to get put out to those two wheels. I'm able to get this thing loose and hopping and slightly airborne over anything but the very smoothest of pavement. It could use a little more compliance to keep the butt down and keep the power gain to the road. There's a little bit of hop and squirreliness back there, certainly under full throttle. The ride on this is also a bit of a miracle. This is one of the nice, comfortable sort of cars that are out there today. It doesn't lose its CTS ride quality, even as it gains its V Venom. And that's, I think, largely attributable to that magnetic ride control that is able to really modify things. Although if I go to the sport mode up here, I'm not feeling a huge difference, to be honest. Not in, uh, not in road driving, maybe it might show up on the track. And of course, a uh, similar thing goes for shifting over here into the sport gate of the shifter. It's not night and day difference. Getting on the manual paddles, of course, that is where you really get a difference. And keeping this guy hot, keeping yourself around eh, 2,500 on up is where the boost is really nice and really available. Of course, the interesting thing is if you look at your supercharger gauge, you know, you're not into it all the time. Much of the time, you're getting tremendous power out of this guy just because it's a 6.2 liter V8. The displacement alone gets you out of trouble all the time. Then once in a while, you'll see that boost needle kick in, but that's not running most of the time. This is a barn burner of an engine with a blower on top of that, and yet very civilized. In general, I don't consider this car to be a wagon, but I think it should just exist on its own as a, uh, as a bigger sedan <laughs> that'll carry one or two more suitcases. And if you think the look of a body style that's wagon-esque is cool, that's all the reason it needs to exist. But don't buy it because you're gonna bring home sheets of plywood. Not unless you're gonna put them on the roof. All right, let's price our little black beauty. 64-1 out the door as a CTSV wagon delivered. Not a lot to add to go see that style. As I told you, it's all in there, such as it is. You do want to spend $1,150 for that nice, big, spacious sunroof. That's money well spent. $1,300 on a gas guzzler tax, that's money not well spent. About $66,400 out the door. Here's the thing. This thing makes no sense at all. However, as an interesting, almost future collectible, a 6.2 supercharged V8 with the available six-speed manual in a wagon shape, you kind of got to like it. <laughs> 